Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with Cassie Hilgert, President and CEO of ArtsQuest. Cassie has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Cassie, for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having us. ArtsQuest is such an amazing organization with such a huge footprint and mm -hmm. serves so many people. Mm -hmm. Talk about the range of programs that you offer. Sure. Uh, ArtsQuest, our mission is to provide arts and cultural programming for urban revitalization. So that gives us a very blank canvas uh, that, that we can fill in. Our programs range from visual arts uh, to performing arts to festivals and cultural events. Uh, we do about 11 festivals a year, uh, something for everyone in that. Uh, but our visual arts programming includes the uh, Valley's only teaching hot glass studio over at the Banana Factory. Uh, we also offer summer camps and classes. Those actually run year round in a number of disciplines. So ceramics, jewelry making, uh, fabrics, uh, emerging arts like 3D printing, we're, we're starting to dabble in as well. From a performing arts standpoint, of course, we're best known for Music Fest, uh, which is the largest free music festival in the country. Uh, but we also do a considerable amount around cinema, uh, independent and scientific films. And then uh, certainly we spend a lot of time on comedy, which uh, has been a growing field for us. And everybody needs to laugh every once in a while. Everyone needs to laugh. I think what's interesting about that uh, sector for us is we offer improv classes. Uh, watching businesses engage in that and sign up their employees uh, is, has been a, a real light bulb for us because that improv is a job skill. It's one of the right. hardest job skills to get, but you know, we're, we're, we're seeing that, that program grow. One of the things that I really find so wonderful about this is this connection between art and economic development. You know, people sometimes underestimate the impact that art and creativity and design thinking and the whole idea of improv, improvisation, right? Mm -hmm. How important that is to economic vitality, to any business. Mm. You have to be able, every customer walking into your store or walking into your office, you're improvising at that moment, but you also have a, a set of skills, you have a set of ideas this this sort of connection between art, the act of creation, and economic development mm -hmm. is 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 fascinating. How does that play out in terms of how you approach your work? When you talk to employers, one of the top skills they want for any employee at any level is the ability to solve problems, which requires creativity. And what artists do every day is solve problems, whether that is uh, a sculpture that is in their head and they have to bring that to light, whether it is a blank canvas, that is a problem and they want to fill that. So for us, arts and culture in particular, when we talk about economic development, is in a unique position, I think, as a nonprofit because we can go into areas like Bethlehem Steel, like the south side of Bethlehem back in the 90s when we opened the banana factory, uh, where private investors and developers aren't going to take the chance. Right. They aren't going to be the first one in. So I think the arts has a unique position as the canary in the coal mine to go in somewhere and use arts as a way to bring people in and make a space that was underutilized uh, feel s uh, safe, creative. Then you create that foot traffic. When you create that foot traffic, you see a small business owner that wants to take a chance because something is already there. So another piece of what you're doing, you're not only create, you're not only um, encouraging creativity, you're not only encourage, encouraging problem solving, you're also bringing people together, aren't you? Without a doubt. And ArtsQuest started back in 84, really with volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have been representing and made up of the community from day one and, and, and we're still uh, community-based for sure. We have 1,800 volunteers. We have 3,000 members. I, I think when we talk about that, that economic development, any business, whether you're small or large, wants continuity. That's, right. that's what they care about most. Show me some predictability. That's where I think we can step in that role in an unpredictable area, in a volatile area, uh, because we can go out and raise public funds. We can access uh, private fundraising dollars to take that risk. That's why I think you see companies come in around us from that standpoint, because we've provided some, some continuity there. I've always said that the nonprofit sector has a self-esteem problem, because the first thing we do is say what we're not. 
It's like we're afraid to say profit. Fact of the matter, in our mindset, uh, we think in a very entrepreneurial way. The only difference between us and um, a, a, a private sector company is what we do with the profits. We just reinvest them in programming and people. And you have expanded since the founding in 1984. Correct. You've gone from a volunteer-driven organization with zero resources and just a lot of energy and ideas to an organization with a budget of $24 million, and you have uh, 65 full-time and, and almost 100 uh, part-time uh, people, Those that huge cohort of volunteers. So you're, you've are you basically driven, you've taken energy, converted it into resources that then gets reinvested, and that's driven expansion. And it's also, uh, besides all those statistics, we hire 1,200 visual and performing artists a year. So we are adamant that when you see a free performance at Music Fest, all of those artists, with the exception of various few, a school group or otherwise, they all get paid. Because uh, if we are promoting arts and culture as a viable pathway for a career, we have to be the leaders in, in making that uh, a, a real honest paying job. So I think the arts are a tremendous um, job creator, and I think we shy away from that sometimes because we spend so much time on the quality of life impact that we forget the economic impact can sometimes dwarf that. Talk about how you're organized and how you develop the competencies in your organization as a business entity sure. to provide this civil society service. Sure. I've worked in healthcare, so I've worked at a hospital system. I've worked in a, at a Fortune 250 company and uh, specializing in chemicals and gases. And when I was at the hospital, right, you had, hosp you had doctors and nurses right. uh, in the gas and chemical company. We had engineers, but outside of those two pockets, you had everything else you needed in a business. You mentioned them, finance, sponsorship, or sales. Uh, you've got development. Uh, we have the exact same needs. So to me, instead of the engineers or the doctors, our core audience that, that is, I think, unique to us is working with and employing artists. We are absolutely business-based. Uh, we've been very fortunate to pull from the private sector, as a matter of fact. So a number of our senior leaders have come from the private sector. They are surprised when they come into a nonprofit world how sophisticated and complicated it is. We have to be, because we don't have the regular abilities to go out to the market and raise money from, say, an uh, angel investor. We have to be much more creative between earned revenue and donated revenue. But you know, we look like any other small or major business when you see the support services that are needed to keep it running every day. So how many people uh, throughout this, this region do you actually touch every year? What is your audience and how does it split between the various types of of uh, experiences sure. that you provide. So the Arts Quest Center, which is at Steel Stacks, includes our two-screen art cinema. It has the Music Fest Cafe presented by Yingling. Uh, the, the cinema is probably the smallest market radius. It's about 20 miles, so that's that's our population. It's a physical there. place. People physical come, place. and it's, it's, yes. it's the kind of repetitive programming that, that serves a particular f uh, physical footprint. Correct, and, and it's a very localized one. Mm -hmm. The cafe becomes almost a 60 mile radius. So we are pulling uh, patrons from northern New Jersey, uh, from Lansdale, from west of Harrisburg. So that uh, market gets a little bit bigger. And then when we talk about most of our festivals, uh, let's say Oktoberfest or Peeps Fest or Envision Photography Festival, that's a 90 mile radius. Uh, so once you get to a 40 mile radius around Bethlehem, you've got about two and a half million people in there. Now, do you have a relationship between the educational ecosystems mm. here throughout uh, Lehigh Valley? Yes. Um, and, and, and your various uh, programs? Yes, that was a big push. Uh, we, we, the Banana Factory has had uh, after school arts enrichment programs for many years, but about four years ago, we had two anonymous donors who helped us invest in a full-time position for a director of education and outreach. That has allowed us to get into about 20 different school districts around the Lehigh Valley. Bethlehem Area School District is our home district. It's where we spend most of our time from an education and outreach standpoint. But today we're serving, you know, depending on the program, anywhere from you know, five to 30,000 youth uh, year round with programs at the Banana Factory, all the way through Music Fest where you know, we've got programs and activities for kids. We're doing a thousand crafts a day for kids at, at Music Fest. So yes, we are heavily involved and invested in uh, education and reaching kids all throughout that spectrum because we think it's critically important for children especially to be exposed to the arts at an early age because we lose that 
uh, ability to be creative and color outside the lines and fail and be messy and see what happens at the end of the process. So we are, we, we love messes. What are your revenue sources to fund the $24 million? Sure. Uh, so ticket sales actually are not that many. We do about 110 shows in the Music Fest Cafe. At Music Fest, we only have one ticketed stage. Mm -hmm. so that's 10 nights. And then we have the cinemas. Two, two cinemas there. That's one source. Uh, sponsorships are an enormous source for us. We have about 200 corporate partners that are providing either uh, cash or in-kind services for us on a year-round basis. So these are investments by your corporate partners who see the energy that is generated by the organization and by these events as being really important to, to them, to their employees, and, and to their own businesses. They see it as important to their employees to keep them here, to recruit and retain mm -hmm. their, their workforce. More importantly, we are a viable, and we can make a very strong argument, much more viable resource for their marketing dollars than most sports endeavors. Not to say that you shouldn't do that too, but we can bring eyeballs and a positive feeling about a brand when it's associated with our festivals, uh, just like you would see at any stadium. I always argue that you know, whenever you go home from a concert though, nobody lost, so everybody's happy. Uh, but sponsorship is, is a very big one for us. They get the business proposition. And you've evolved your model so that those eyes also transfer into our mobile devices, into the Correct. internet, into your social media as well. So you've created uh, that function of delivering that value yes. to your sponsors, which creates a greater incentive for them to engage. So it's that virtuous cycle. Correct. We spend a lot of time with every corporate partner to find out who do you care about? Is it an age range? Is it a demographic? Uh, and then we will look across our 4,000 concerts, classes, and camps, and we can pick from a very narrow focus or a very broad focus, depending on, on what, what they need. So there is literally no company that you know we can't work with. So there's corporate sponsorships and then there's uh, food and beverage is, is actually a very big uh, earned revenue opportunity for us. Uh, and then uh, finally we have memberships. So we have uh, about 3,300 members ranging from $100 to $25,000 a year that support us. So that is a great uh, recurring form of revenue that allows us knowing that we've got members that are, are, are supporting us every month we can go out and start a new program, uh, knowing that we've got a little bit of money somewhere that we can draw on to invest and, and, and start up something new. Just a wonderful story about ArtQuest and about the work that you're doing in Lehigh Valley and, and surrounding towns. Uh, Cassie Hilgert, thank you so much for sharing this amazing, amazing uh, organization's work with us. And thank you so much for your insight. Well, thank you for helping us get the word out.